Thank you all for joining us tonight, or this afternoon, I should say. We're excited to be here, and we're excited to be recognizing some activities that have been taking place at the high school with regard to prevention. Um, we have a full agenda with several special guests. Um, so without further ado, I think I'd like to invite Principal Rick Swanson to come up to the microphone and make some remarks. Okay, thank you very much. Just uh, wanted to express my appreciation to CARES for the tremendous work that they do year in and year out as tremendous allies uh, to all of us at the high school. And express how much we appreciate the fact that you're recognizing the work of some of our students here today. Truly, uh, the contributions that our students make at the high school, um, whether they be from our Students Against Instructive Decisions group or whether they be from our Holocaust and Human Behavior class, some of the students who you'll meet today, uh, or from any number of other groups who do such a great job at the high school in representing their peers and uh, helping their peers to make healthy decisions. And the SAD group that, you know, as a former SAD member myself, way back when, in the 1980s, back when SAD was Students Against Drunk Driving, it's not the SAD group that, that some of us may remember. The issues that our SAD group confronts now are, are so much more diverse and they do a wonderful job not only addressing issues of substances, drugs and alcohol, uh, safe driving, but also issues around mental health awareness, around eating disorders, around dating violence, around dri driving safety. And even now, as I think you'll hear more about today, taking on some political action and confronting the issue of recreational marijuana and whether it will become available in our town. Really wanted to applaud our students for having the courage to take on those issues um, and, and to really play a pivotal role, and I think in a more powerful way than those of us who are adults in the building are sometimes able to do. When those messages come from peers, it can really resonate in, in powerful ways. We've seen that uh, again and again in our school, and I really want to uh, express my own appreciation to the students who take the lead on that, and their advisor, our school resource officer, Tom Fort, who's provided terrific leadership to SAD over the past year. Uh, and also the next speaker who will come up, who's also played a similar and pivotal role in helping to inspire leadership among our students is a social studies teacher, Melissa McCash, who's one of two teachers, along with Ben Lockheim, another social studies teacher, in inaugurating a brand new course this year called Holocaust and Human Behavior that's not strictly a history course, but also a course that inspires students to civic action. And uh, she'll introduce several of her students to share with them, uh, share with all of us, a presentation that they delivered before the entire freshman class earlier this year. So I wanted to introduce Melissa McCash, uh, who also had an incredible year coaching our volleyball team this year. <laughs> led them to their, their best season ever. Um, and at the same time was launching this brand new course, which she'll tell you a little bit about today. So Melissa McCash. Thank you, Mr. Swanson. So my name is Melissa McCash. I teach social studies at the high school. And this year, we had a new elective being offered. And it was Holocaust and Human Behavior. Um, just to give you some background information on the course, um, we follow the scope and sequence of looking at how individuals identify themselves in society. That's our first unit. Then we get into more group mentality with how humans naturally form groups into the we and the they. And we start off looking at the legacy of World War I, um, how fragile democracy could be with like the Weimar Republic in Germany. And then we get into the rise of um, Hitler and the Nazi party, and obviously study the Holocaust as our case study. And um, after the Holocaust, we look at memory and legacy. And then the final project, um, which actually the students work on from the very beginning of the course is a choosing to participate final project. So during our study of human behavior, we look at like this universe of obligation and how people feel obligated to certain people in their society. And we ask them to like expand their universe of obligation by choosing a social injustice that is meaningful to them and trying to look at how they can go about um, making, resolving that issue within their community. So there's many different projects and many different levels. Some were very local based, some were more national, some were global. But I do want to introduce and turn over the floor to two of the three um, seniors that worked on this project, Mary-Kate Stack and Meredith Manconi, and Caroline Barrett um, could not be here due to a conflict. So um, we'll turn the floor over to you guys. Hi, my name is Meredith Manconi. 
Um, and I'm Mary Kay Stack. And so we, as, as Ms. McCash said, we took the class Holocaust and Human Behavior, which is an elective that juniors or seniors can take. And our final project, we chose to um, want to talk about the topic um, of stigma and uh, peer pressure and how to eliminate stigma in our, our own high school. And if you've um, been reading the papers, um, Hingham Journal specifically, you'll see that there are some issues you know, with vaping or just uh, doing drugs in the high school. And we want to talk about uh, the, freshman, uh, the freshman class to like try to get rid of the stigmas. Like, when you go to high school, you'll be hearing the words like stoners or potheads. You know, we want to eliminate that stigma because a lot of the times the kids are afraid to come out and admit to their parents or people like uh, guidance counselors or Officer Ford, who is always there to help. And even Ms. McCash, like, you know, we can go to our teachers and they're very supportive. However, even our own student, students, like our peers, are preventing like the kids around us from going to ask for help. Um, so the first issue we came upon to the freshmen, the reason we decided that the freshmen were a good idea to present to was because they're the ones that are going to be here for, they're the ones that are going to be in the high school for four years. So we thought that as they go through the years, they'll be able to eliminate the stigmas and they'll talk to the freshmen that um, will be there when they're seniors. And we just hope that through the years, it'll be like eliminating stigma as a whole. So peer pressure, we started off, you know, it's, the idea that uh, around the time freshmen is when they're introduced to you know drugs and alcohol, and we want to talk to them that you know being being in this situation, you know they're pressured by their friends because they feel they want to feel like they're included. They don't want to be left out, and so you know the problem in the future is that if they become addicted to any substances and don't ask for help, addiction is something that could easily lead them uh, in the future after they graduate high school and graduate college. Um, and we also told them that, you know, as the earlier you start um, drinking or using any drugs is more, like you're, more likely you're going to have um, addiction problems when you're older. And we, we also said that um, it can uh, lead addiction, can be had many things, you know, it can be started from vaping, it can also be started from prescription drugs because um, a lot of the freshmen are athletes and it is very common to have an injury. I can say too that I've had injuries while playing uh, soccer and tennis. And um, you, you're often given like painkillers, and especially people who have like torn ACL or something like that, the painkillers um, can be addictive, and because of that, they can become addicted and feel that they are afraid to come out and say um, say what they feel and you know that they need help. And we also uh, we uh, learned a couple of studies. So one of the studies was um, in 2014, 21% uh, of Americans 12 or older had some sort of substance abuse problem in 2013. Um, next slide. And so we also want to talk about the idea of stigma. And we did a lot of research on this, and we learned a lot of things that I didn't actually know. And so it turns out that the public looks more negatively towards people who are um, have a drug addiction or substance addiction um, than a mental illness. And so we were talking to CARES, and they actually, you know, they named this as a mental illness. And so it, um, the idea is that people will become, you know, they'll see that being addicted is a mental illness and it's not just, you know, it's not your choice. Like you, you don't choose to be, become, or you don't choose to be addicted and that like you shouldn't be seen uh, negatively if you are. Um, we also found that um, some healthcare providers feel uncomfortable when working with people who are addicted to drugs and it can cause social and mental impacts and stress can lead to depression, which depression, there are drugs that they take for depression and that can lead to even more addiction. And then they will, because of the stigmas around that addiction, they will not look for help. Okay. Yeah. Um, so in addition to that, a Johns Hopkins study had revealed that the public looked more negatively at those who had a drug addiction compared to a mental illness. Um, it was also found that some healthcare providers had felt uncomfortable while working with somebody who is addicted to drugs. And like Mary Kate said before, becoming an addict can happen to anyone from prescription drugs to peer pressure. And nurses were even found to have negative views on addicts, which was clearly a problem. So, next slide. Mm -hmm. So these are just a few ways to fight stigma. Um, the general definition of stigma is a mark of disgrace associated with the particular circumstance, quality, or person, which can easily be prevented or eliminated with the help of the community. 
Um, you can offer support in many different ways, such as learning about addiction and being able to recognize the signs is also very beneficial. Um, talking about the problem can also be helpful for both the person trying to overcome this addiction as well as their loved ones. And a person with a drug problem may be reluctant to come to you and ask for help, but discussing the issue is definitely your best chance to be there for them. Um, many stereotypes are formed around addicts regarding their personality, although they are the the, still the same person, and it is important to recognize that. Um, avoiding labels is a very important step in eliminating stigma, and speaking up for the people who are being judged helps the individual feel safer. And different ways, like I said before, that are presented here are offering support, listening to the people without immediately judging them, seeing the person behind the addiction, trying to understand by researching and learning further, avoiding labels, and speaking up for those who are being judged. Yeah. Um, if anyone has any questions, you can ask us. And then um, as a, one of the ways that uh, project was, was to try to keep it going in the community, so we actually partnered up with SAD to uh, help try to keep this as a freshman advisory and um, just give them a presentation every year and try to just keep the freshman class, you know, building it through the year so that stigma is eliminated as a whole through our high school, hopefully, at the end when we're gone, people will still be seeing this project and will no longer see stigmas as, or addicts as bad or negative. Definitely. Yeah. And we definitely chose to do this topic just because um, drug abuse and stigma throughout Hingham is definitely a prevalent issue, and I feel as though it's more of an issue than many people believe is true within the town of Hingham, so we thought it would be important to present this and just make people aware of these problems that are happening in our town. So Thank you so much. Lori and I were pleased to participate in their initial presentation to the freshman class, and you had a really wonderful turnout and got some really tremendous reaction from the students who were there for obvious reasons. Very thorough and very thoughtful presentation. Thank you so much. Um, if anybody has any questions about the presentation, um, feel free to come up to the mic. I know that you said that you're open to taking questions. Is sure. that what you said? Yeah, definitely. If anyone wants to. <laughs> and if not, then we can move along. Thank sure. you so much. Of course. Thank you. Thank you. So next up we have Officer Tom Ford, who is the school resource officer at Hingham High School, and he's going to be introducing um, members of the SAD program at Hingham High. Thank you. Thank you. Um, before I introduce the girls, I just want to uh, thank Hingham Cares for all the support they've given um, to uh, the SAD group. And also I'd like to thank uh, Dr. Gallo, Chief Olson, and uh, Principal Swanson for being so supportive of the uh, school resource officer position and allowing us to uh, really work with these kids on a daily basis. And um, I'm going to introduce to you um, our SAD chapter pre president, Mary Packard, and uh, another member of our exec board, the uh, SAD, um, our treasurer, it's uh, Abby Danzro. And uh, they've done an awesome job this year. They're, um, great um, role models to the younger kids and to their peers. And uh, they're going to explain to you um, what we've done this year and what we plan on doing. Hi, guys. So I'm Mary, and this is Abby. So we ran for the SAD Exec Board back in May. And we did this because we believe that all students should be like safe in their school environment and be informed about like the different dis destructive decisions that are around us in our everyday lives. So SAD stands for Students Against Destructi Destructive Decisions. And so in SAD, we have a club meeting every, every month. It's the first Wednesday of the month. And at these meetings, we discuss like our theme of the month. So every month, the theme changes. Like this month, it is um, teen dating violence. And there's a week at the end of the month that's um, eating disorder awareness week. So it's things like that. So it's drug, alcohol awareness, but it's also different destructive decisions that can be made in our community. So one thing that our SAD club has done this year was back in September, we attended a conference at Lombardos where um, Abby and I and another member of our exec board were, we talked to around 250 people about the marijuana use at our school and like the different where like the different types of things we see like the marijuana itself edibles all that stuff so like and how kids use it in our community so 
Um, so just a few things that we've done lately. Um, we're getting a petition to the high school students regarding pot shops in Hingham to see like their opinion and stuff. And then some of you may have attended the meeting in the fall that was played at the middle school. It was a movie called If They Had Known, and it was a family that lost their son to um, an overdose. And so we got the movie, and it's going to be played before like prom in the spring. So um, another campaign that we do, which will be around prom season, is we put a like car that's been crashed outside of the school in order to like spread awareness about how like drunk driving and well distracted driving too like which includes like um driving well under the influence of marijuana texting and driving or drunk driving can impact the like your driving as well as everyone around you so it's kind of a around prom season just because like we want everyone to be safe around especially around that time because it's prom as well as graduation and everything like that. Great. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Um. So we're creating a statement to propose at the town meeting regarding pot shops in Hingham, and we will present that coming up. Great. Thank you very much. And thank you, Officer Ford, for all the work that you do with the SAD group. Really fantastic. Thank you, girls. Thank you. Um, all right, so next up, co-chair, um, my co-chair, Lori McCarthy, has been working very closely with the um, health program at Hingham High School. Um, there's a new portion of the curriculum that was just instituted this year, correct? I think they added to it. Added to it um, on addiction and um, substance misuse prevention. So she's going to share a little bit about what they've been doing with the 10th graders at Hingham High. So yeah, thank you. Hi, I'm Lori McCarthy. I'm the co-chair of Hingham Cares. I'm a licensed alcohol and drug counselor. And um, I just will also want to do a shout out to uh, Hingham High School, Mr. Swanson, uh, Mrs. Gallo, uh, Officer Ford. Um, the school community is so receptive and to you know the work that we're doing in educating and bringing awareness to our community around substance use, um, you know, concerning our, not only adults in the community, but our, you know, our kids as well. So um, it's been a great collaboration and relationship uh, thus far, and we, we appreciate it. Uh, I had the good fortune um, this year, Hingham High School uh, extended the number of um, sessions for uh, addiction education in 10th grade health class. So instead of having, I, I, I'm not sure if it was, what, whatever it was, it was maybe five days, they extended it to 10 days per semester for uh, substance use education and addiction education. And um, I was asked to come into the school and uh, go through a whole day of classes um, and uh, beginning A period for 10th grade. Um, and we set up the format for that they could ask anonymous questions, um, the students, so no one would feel like they were being called out. And it was any question regarding any substance, um, treatment, what treatment looks like, what it is, um, any kind of peer, you know, peer pressure questions. If you have a loved one that's suffering from substance abuse, what do you do? Uh, and the uh, every single class, um, I have to say, was it was really amazing. The the students were attentive. They asked such smart and you know good questions regarding marijuana and is it addictive, addictive drugs. Um, how do you get addicted? How does one get help uh, once they are? How do you get help for a parent or a loved one? Um, and so it was a really, uh, you know, it was a great day. Um, we also had a, someone come in from um, a regional substance use uh, program, Gosnold, and he talked a lot about uh, his work. Um, he also talked about uh, mindfulness and using other strategies to deal with stress and, um, you know, things like that, uh, and how you, you know, how you can 
manage stress without using uh, substances. Um, so he was he was great too. They played. Uh, I think she she showed the film Unguarded with Chris Heron, and students were able to uh, answer a series of questions around that. So it was a very good, um, really really inspiring and excellent conversation with the 10th grade class at Hingham High School. We go in again next semester, or this semester, I, I should say, and we'll be getting the dates for that relatively soon. So um, I'm looking forward to going back to the high school and, and seeing the kids. So thank you. Great. Thank you very much. So um, Hingham Cares is currently um, looking into uh, nonprofit status so that we can start doing some fundraising um, and separate a little bit from the town. Currently we're um, sort of loosely under the town of Hingham um, and we're looking to set up a, a board um, that can oversee Hingham Cares and like I said for fundraising purposes specifically um, be established as a nonprofit. And to that end we have also been considering uh, a new look for Hingham Cares. We have a logo that we've been working with for quite some time now and um, wanted to see if there was a student at the, at the high school who would be interested in tackling the project of providing us with something a little fresh, a little new. And Vincey Wynn stepped up and took on the challenge. Um, he's been amazing to work with. Vincey's a senior at Hingham High. He's in the graphics department. and. Um, he provided us with eight, I think, very unique looking logos. Um, we emailed them around, we narrowed them down to two, and then of the final two, we do have the final product here with us tonight. So, um, Vincey, I didn't have a chance to talk with you ahead of time about this, but if you'd like to step up to the microphone and say a few words, we're all ears. Are you gonna show it? Oh, and yes, we have, so I have, um, I have the logo right here. And we also have a shot over here. Hey guys, uh, my, name's, uh, my name's Vincent Wynn, and I'd just like to thank uh, Lori and Kristen for providing me with a wonderful opportunity to uh, kind of expand my design experience. And as a graphic designer, there's nothing more important than uh, practicing with dealing clients and really designing more and more stuff. And you know, as a student, it's it's very hard for me to get these kind of opportunities, and I'd like to thank them for having the patience to put up with my hectic schedule. <laughs> Great. We've been just as hectic. So. <laughs> yeah. And I've been really grateful for this opportunity. Great. Well, great we job. really appreciate it. You did a beautiful job, and you were so responsive to feedback and very professional. And as promised, we have a little something for you that I would like to hand off to you. We're um, thanking Vincy with a $100 check from Hingham Cares. Thank you very much. You are wonderful. Thank you. So, tremendous amount of talent at Hingham High School. It's just very impressive, and we're so glad that everybody could be here so that we could recognize all of you and really highlight a lot of the work that's taking place at Hingham High. Um, <laughs> And Hingham Cares is, we're just honored to be collaborating with all of you. So thank you. Um, so that convenes our, uh, our special business. Um, we are way ahead of schedule, which is nice. Um, and we're going to move on to some more, just a couple of items of additional business. So you're welcome to stay. I know some people had some time constraints, but I can't imagine we're going to go for more than another 15 minutes. Um, before we move on, though, I didn't know if Dr. Gallo would like to say a few things on behalf of the school department. Sure, thank you. Uh, we're pretty proud of our kids. We <laughs> see five of them here, but we have lots, lots more uh, kids that are doing wonderful things at the school. And, and actually, we have a lot of things that are kind of converging this year. So you have the efforts of, of, uh, of CARES and the, the interconnection there. We have the ongoing efforts of our SAD group that uh, have been for years providing wonderful information mm. for kids and serving as role models and so on. We have the new health curriculum, brand new this year, that's 
extended and now is a graduation requirement. That's exciting, gives us more time to share uh, good information. We have uh, an initiative that's gonna be highlighted tonight at the school committee and that's uh, Hingham uh, HTSS, which stands for Hingham Tiered Systems of Support. And it's around the issue of anxiety and depression and so many of those other issues that, uh, that we put under that category of social emotional uh, concerns and illness. And we had surveys this year that were done beginning at grade four all the way uh, through uh, the high school. And students participated in the surveys, faculty participated at the different levels and in every school, and as well teachers. And so tonight, the, those preliminary reports uh, with wonderful graphics and, and, uh, and charts uh, are being presented at the school committee meeting. There are upcoming uh, meetings in every school, uh, one for faculty and one for uh, parents in the uh, PTO parents. Uh, our partners in this effort, in addition to, to our uh, HTSS committee, a very broad committee of uh, faculty members in the different buildings, but also uh, people in the community who have interests and expertise in, in the whole area of social emotional uh, illness. And we will, are working in building teams on what our responses will be, but this is the initial data. But so much of that, if you look at the survey and um, and if you come tonight or watch on TV, because that also is, uh, is being uh, taped, um, you can see that how much um, things like risky behavior interacts with uh, the uh, focus of the DARE activities and some of that risky behavior is part of the mission of CARES, um, dealing with that. And so a lot of great things going on. I, I, would like Rick to come up because last week, a good example of something that uh, was done for, for all the kids was providing more information mm -hmm. about a particular risky behavior, in fact, vaping, and there was an assembly. But a part of that assembly also was, once again, our students coming up with their own response to some of the things that, that aren't so great that are going on in our high school now. So if Rick could just take a minute to talk about that uh, assembly. Assembly last week was particularly memorable for, for several reasons, and uh, Mike Rank is one of my all-time favorite student council assemblies <laughs> because not only did I, I think uh, the school did a good job of addressing um, a substance issue that we're particularly concerned uh, about now, and that is the issue of e-cigarettes and vaporizers that can be used to inhale any number of chemicals, uh, not only nicotine products but even marijuana products as well. And, and we've seen, uh, as borne out by survey data, pretty dramatic increase over the past year in teenagers using vaporizers, particularly the, of the nicotine variety, including Juuls. And um, so our student council leadership had really embraced the idea of devoting a significant portion of the student council assembly to that issue. And together we had invited a local pediatrician, Dr. Katie McBride, who's a Hingham mom. She has to children who attend Foster Elementary School. She's a very popular local pediatrician who works for Healthcare South and Situate Pediatrics. And she had prepared a presentation from a medical perspective on the health dangers of vaping. And it really, I think, helped to dispel some of the myths that uh, are out there now about vaporizers not really being um, addictive or, well, they're certainly not as harmful as cigarettes, and so maybe it's okay to do them. But she, she was very clear about expressing the health dangers, the, the, the dangerous chemicals that are contained in uh, even the jewels and other nicotine products, and the degree to which they, they can be addictive, can lead to other more dangerous things. And uh, it was a, a really well done presentation, and we're actually gonna be sending that out very soon too. So parents, uh, if anyone's watching this, um, High school parents will have that available, and we hope to have a link to it from the high school website as well. It was really well done and very informative. And as, as a follow-up to Dr. McBride's presentation, what also was a very moving conclusion to the assembly was a um, uh, presentation that was put together by 10 or 12 of our key student leaders who had decided they wanted a student response to some of the recent climate issues that had come up at the high school, uh, some of which I, I've addressed publicly with parents and, and with students. But here we had an opportunity for students to say, from our perspective as students, 
here's the kind of community that we're trying to build. And the way they structured it was a series of I believe statements. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I thought it was really powerful and moving. This, we, we also have, uh, well, I tweeted it out the next day. We put a link up on YouTube. And uh, anybody who wanted to check that high school Twitter feed, and there's a link to it from the homepage of the website, could see. And I think the comment I had put with, with the, the tweet was that here is proof that Hingham High School has chosen its student leadership very wisely. <laughs> and, and the caliber of response that those students had, uh, had put together really made me very proud to be associated with the school and, and had given further proof that we've got the right people in positions of leadership uh, among our student body. That's great. Yeah. And the I believe statements individual ones were followed by uh, the students who were presenting uh, asking those who believed as they did to stand up and there was a pretty good mm, group that's of great. kids standing up so very proud of the uh, our kids and their own outreach um not not dictated by administration but what they believe and and how articulate they are i mentioned one other thing and that is that two years ago when the opioid prevention law uh, came into place, there were a number of different things that communities, particularly schools, needed to do. And they included writing a policy, kind of an obvious thing that you would need as a statement that uh, uh, in support of uh, prevention efforts, um, you had to insert certain uh, segments into courses like driver ed that related to prevention. And one of the things that had to be implemented two years later, which is now and during the school year, was the SPRIT survey. And what it is is a brief um, interview, a brief interview. We had to choose two grades, one middle school and one high school. So in Hingham, that survey is being administered to our seventh graders, about 350 young people, and our ninth graders, another 350 or so students. Uh, and it's a, uh, a published survey. Parents were made aware uh, that this was going to be administered. They were given the opportunity to opt out by notifying us in writing that they did not want their children. Pretty graphic questions uh, in, the, in the survey uh, about student behavior that certainly most adults, and I think even most of our students, would recognize as being risky behavior. And, and the intent was to try to identify those students who might be at risk uh, of uh, addictive uh, practices, if you will. And um, so the survey is only 10 or 12 minutes long. Resources are handed out to all of the students who participate, written resources. Uh, the survey is anonymous. The data from the survey will be um, forwarded to the Department of Public Health. And this is going on in all, all of the uh, Commonwealth all of the middle and the high schools in the in the Commonwealth. So we started actually, we sent out the letters two weeks ago or so, and last week uh, we did the first set of surveys. They are administered by the nurses in the schools, and the nurses have been trained as to how to administer the survey uh, and how to take the data in such a way that it will be remain anonymous. And uh, frankly, I had anticipated more parents would want to opt out. And at the middle school, there are uh, 1,100 students there in in the seventh grade, about 360, and and um, only 54, 56, I think, uh, Mr. Smith said, had opted out. So they had the first day of surveys one day last week, and it was 50 students, and everything went smoothly. There were no concerns, unfortunately, uh, no concerns about uh, risky behavior among those that were certified. So. Um, so we're excited to see how that plays out. Um, we, in order to administer the survey, we have to hire uh, substitute nurses to come in so that our nurses can um, can do the survey because they are trained uh, with the students. So there's a cost to that and uh, some logistics uh, involved. But um, high school is going to start March, just after first week in March. First week in March, and so you'll hear more about that mm -hmm. as it comes along. But uh, uh, something that came out of that law, opioid prevention law. So, so a lot of things going on in our schools. A lot of things going on with kids. A lot of initiative by, by kids. And uh, you know, when you see what kids can do, it's easier to deal with the few kids who don't always do the right thing. And uh, we're always going to have to work at that. But we've got a lot of examples of wonderful behavior and 
responsible behavior and leadership and all of those good things that we want to see in our students. So thank you, girls. Great. Thank you, Dr. Gallo. Dr. Gallo, you announced your retirement recently. I did. You're retiring. But for a year and a half away. So. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> but big shoes to fill. And we, well, we appreciate your level of commitment to Hingham Cares. You attend every meeting. As a matter of fact, she arrived tonight and said, I'm sorry I brought my dinner with me. And her dinner is a bag of Fritos. <laughs> so um, just a tremendous level of commitment, and we appreciate that. Um, thank you, Mr. Swanson, for joining us this evening. Thank you to Mrs. McCash, who had to um, take off and, and deal with um, child pickup and that sort of thing, <laughs> for making time in her busy schedule to join us. And Officer Ford, thank you very much for being here as well. Um, so the remaining additional business that we have has to do with, um, if you receive the handouts tonight, one of them is um, an official statement that was um, drafted by the school committee last November um, during the he initial hearing process on the retail recreational marijuana proposals. And um, after December 31st, the slate gets wiped clean and new testimony needs to be admitted. So the school committee is actually voting tonight to resubmit this particular testimony to both the planning board and the board of selectmen. Um, and it's a request, the title of it is a request to ban all retail recreational marijuana establishments in Hingham. Um, and we'll be posting this on our web page and also our Facebook page as well for those who are interested in reading it in detail. Um, but yet another reason to tune into the school committee meeting this evening um, as they take that vote. And we appreciate their support. Um, in the community. And um, so Laurie and I uh, did testify at a planning board meeting several months ago, again, before the December 31st cutoff um, for initial testimony. So we'll be submitting something in writing on behalf of Hingham Cares. And um, basically, our, our focus is two pronged. One is that um, one of the risk factors associated with addiction and substance misuse is accessibility. And we need to be mindful of that when we think of bringing another substance into our community. Um, and then, of course, the second is messaging. And as you can see from the presentations that were done this evening by some of the high school students, um, there are definitely concerns at the high school from the students themselves. They're taking initiative on this um, about having um, marijuana establishments in Hingham. So, um, you know, we commend you and admire you for taking a stand on that and hope you have the opportunity to speak at town meeting um, and, and represent that. So we haven't drafted that statement yet, but we will, and we'll send it around to members of the board for their approval and um, submit that before. I was initially told that the 15th was the deadline, but I think they're hearing, they being the planning board, I think they're hearing the marijuana question um, for the final time on the 26th, I believe. I, I think I may have the date wrong, but it's later in the month. Um, so we have a little bit more time to take care of that. And then finally, the only other thing that I have on the agenda, unless we have anything else to discuss, is an upcoming event on April 9th. So Hingham Cares is going to be hosting an event at the library on vaping, alcohol, and marijuana. And we started publicizing it, and lo and behold, the middle school is doing the exact same presentation on the exact same night. <laughs> so we are now collaborating with the Hingham uh, Middle School PTO on this presentation. It's going to, I, I think the, the date is set, but the time and the location have yet to be determined. Um, but there'll be a guest speaker coming in from Karen. Uh, that's C-A-R-O-N? C-A-R-O-N. It's a treatment center, and they have a very large educational arm. Uh, excellent, excellent uh, presenters. So um, somebody from Karen will be presenting that evening on the 9th. Um, and again, date or time and location to be determined. And um, you know, we're excited to be co-sponsoring that. We had a really successful event at the library um, that we co-sponsored with SNAP, which is a special needs athletic partnership here in Hingham, just two weeks ago. Um, tremendous turnout, great conversation, discussion. Again, we thank um, Officer Ramsey, Officer Ford, Chief Olson for being a part of that um, and fielding questions from the community on you know, things that are 
that you're seeing at the at the very local level. So, um, so we're actually set to adjourn a half an hour early. Talk about efficient. <laughs> <laughs> That's a first. Good job. Unless anybody has any questions or anything, yes, Chief, you'll need to come up to the microphone now. Yes. Uh, no, I just, I just wanted to say um, this morning I was at a meeting um, with the Plymouth County Outreach Group, and um, a lot of the stuff we've been doing, we've been compiling data over the past couple of years. Uh, the Plymouth County region handled over a little over 1,800 overdose incidences, and it's all broken down by towns. Um, I have to filter through the data a little bit more to get it out there, but of those 1,800 uh, overdoses, uh, the fatals were around 132. So we're still continuing to do the outreach, and I think one of the things that I'm seeing here and in other communities is that we're definitely building that uh, that place and getting and breaking down that stigma that the girls talked about that people are able to reach out and get treatment. I, I hope that people are comfortable enough to contact organizations. Um, we've done a lot of work on putting in peer recovery coaches and resources that people can go to because there's a lot of questions and I know sometimes I, I would like to think that people could pick up a phone and call the police department and say, I need help. I know that's probably a utopia for me, but um, I think we provide other resources through the schools and the Hingham Cares. That we're, we're now getting these uh, facilities and these people into the resource positions where people can call. And I said it's, it's taken a long time, but I think the continued uh, work that all the police departments are doing in the 27 counties, and not only just the police departments, but I sat in a room down at Bridgewater State College and uh, there was just as many on, on the health care side and we're continuing to work with the different hospitals uh, and making progress with them as well to include them into the into a system where we can sort of track. Our goal is that everyone that has an overdose incident is that they're going to get visited by a recovery coach and uh, someone in the healthcare facility that will be able to provide assistance to them and to their family. Because I think in this, in, you know, what I've seen in this whole thing of addiction is that we often just forget about the effects that it has on the family and what the parents and the family members have suffered as well. So it's important when we get out there, we do provide resources to both the uh, substance abuse disorder people and also to their families. So I think the system's working and, and we're still working to improve it. And if we get more hospitals on, I think there's a um, there's one group down in the Middleborough area that just recently got taken over by a new hospital conglomerate. So we're, we're sort of working with them. and. We don't share patient information, but basically, um, is all they will just tell us is that if someone came in with an overdose, is that they just say, we don't have to go visit them and talk with them because they're already providing those resources that we do. So we're very careful about not crossing over different boundaries, but it, it's a great program, and uh, I'm hoping that the numbers keep on getting better. And interestingly enough, um, we're looking at the two major groups uh, today from 20, from 20 to 29 and, 20 and 30 to 39. Um, there's more actual, the overdoses are actually taking at a higher percentage in the 30 to 39 year old group. But the, um, that's the fatal overdoses, but the uh, repeated overdoses are higher amongst the, uh, tw the 20 to 29 group. So we're still looking at that same, same forum of people that we still need to reach out and get help to. So any other questions or interest on that? I'll try to get some of that data out to you once they get it officially released. Okay. All right. Thank you. Bye-bye. On, on that yep. note, um, I, just I, wanted, I just want to say thank you to the Hingham Police Department for your involvement. I have two personal experiences with the Hingham Police Department. Uh, one was with Hingham County Outreach Group. Well, thank you. And I'm glad, glad to hear that because it's something, you know, like I said, I've learned a lot in my years. And the way I look at this is so much different than when I did 30 years ago. A completely 180% reversal on how I look at this. And I think that's the same way with most police departments. So, all right, thank you. I just want to remind anyone who's listening that if they have a question or concern um, around this topic, that they can email Hingham Cares Board at gmail.com. 
and uh, we will um, you know respond and uh, do what we can to offer some support or services or resources so that is available to anyone in the community Great. so between now and the next time we meet um, we'll be continuing to meet with the coastal coalition which is um, Hingham Cares uh, Safe Harbor Cohasset and Hapsa of Hull we've also um, had the Duxbury representative from, representatives from Duxbury Facts join us on occasion um, and the Marshfield Coalition as well, which I believe is also Marshfield Facts and Situate Facts as well. So um, a lot of you know, good collaboration taking place among coalitions, which is important. Um, and there's a, uh, the Plymouth County Sheriff and DA are putting on um, a really interesting uh, presentation that's open to community leaders on uh, accessibility of drugs on the dark web and how oh thank you um, and how there'll be an agent from the FBI there um, discussing in detail what's taking place on the dark web how the dark web uh, people use the dark web to target um, young people in particular and how drugs are made available um, um, in that way. Um, so that's being held on February 27th at 9.30 in the morning, and it's being held at the Plymouth County Sheriff's Department Training Center Amphitheater at 24 Long Pond Road. So we'll put information up about that on our website as well. If anyone's interested in going, there is an email address um, to RSVP to. It's a, it's a small space. I think they can only accommodate 75. So, But we'll be in attendance. Somebody from CARES will be in attendance, and we'll report back. So lots of interesting things taking place and a lot of collaboration as well, which is really critical. Um, I think we need to accept the minutes that you brought as a final order of business. Um, so members of the board who received a copy of the minutes, that we approve the minutes of the uh, January 22nd meeting. Agree. Second. Okay. All in favor? Aye. Aye. So moved. Fantastic. Well, thank you all so thank much you, for being everyone. here. Thank you to everyone who's watching this evening. Um, thank you to Harbor Media for broadcasting this, and we look forward to sharing it on our Facebook page so that others can um, take advantage of it. Thank you all. Thanks. Have Say a good goodbye. night.